much for taking your time out of your schedule to interacting with us. Um, my name is Kartikey Singh. I'm the co-founder of Rebel Girls. Um, Rebel Girls is a youth-led platform that aims to get students into uh, in, to interact with other female extraordinary women who have done something different in their field. So this interview will just be a short way of um, telling our viewers and people who follow us about female environmentalism, how environmentalism is different for men and women, and also be talking about um, 2021's theme for World Environment Day, which is eco-restoration. So I have a few questions, ma'am. So my first question is, how did you start your journey and when did you decide to take on the path of becoming an environmentalist? Thank you, Karthik, firstly. Thank you so much for asking me to do this. I'm really honored to be part of this platform. Very important. Um, my journey started when I was in school, actually. I was in modern school, Varakamba Road, and I, uh, I got involved in, uh, with a few students um, on environmental issues. And so it was in school that um, my interest in the environment grew. And we started doing everything from, you know, trying to understand nature uh, around us. Uh, look, you know, we, we stood up to government when the trees were being cut on in Lodi Road. We trekked up to the Himalayas to understand the Chipko movement. So my journey started very much like yours um, when I was in school. So you had a very humble start for your journey in, in being an environmentalist. So I want to just ask on to that. Did your gender ever impact your journey? I think gender does impact work, particularly when you are working in areas which uh, uh, where there is a lot, um, uh, lot less voices coming from the female gender. Um, I have never let that stop me because I am, um, I can be quite brash. Uh, when I was young, I was also very rude. Uh, some things I regret today because I think a lot can be done without being rude. But yes, I have bullied and pushed my way through uh, in spite of the fact that there was, uh, it is difficult because there is a sort of sense of, you know, what does she know? She's only a young girl. And it won't be said to a young man, but it will be said to a young woman. And uh, as you grow up, as you set up an institution, it gets tough as the institution, um, you're the face of the institution in areas where there are essentially only men speaking. Um, the one big problem I'm finding, Kartik, is not just about gender, but the fact, and please forgive me because I know you're a boy, you're a young man, and I hope you forgive me when I say this, but I think men tend to be very um, docile and they are, are much more status quo and they tend to just want to play the game. And my biggest problem with men in the room is not that they are men, but if I may say it very, very bluntly, that they are wimps. And I think that's where I find in the policy circles that the, my male colleagues who come from other uh, institutions and come to the platform, I find I'm the only one who is uh, speaking, um, who, who wants to push hard. And often that puts me at a disadvantage because I'm not only the only woman, but I'm also the only woman speaking her mind, whereas everybody else is playing the game. And I think that's where men are really letting us down. Yeah, I mean, that I definitely agree that in a lot of cases, either um, people would put you down saying that you're just a young girl, what do you have to say? So just to like, um, add more to that. So in spite of all of that, what, um, what incidents inspired you to take on the path of environmentalism? What inspired you? So one of my first incidents uh, that happened in my life was, uh, you know, as I said, as young environmentalists, uh, we walked up, we trekked up to the Himalayas to, to understand the Chipko movement. And I can still see the faces of the women who uh, told me in so no uncertain words that uh, the forest mattered to them. And as, as an urban environmentalist, for me, protecting trees was about trees. For them, protecting 
the forest was about their future. And um, it was about existence. It was about uh, their means of survival. And I think that really shaped my thinking when I went. <laughs> Sorry. Yes. So that was yeah. one instance that I can, that really makes me think. Another one was again, traveling uh, through Rajasthan, uh, you know, stopping and seeing some water harvesting structures and uh, people basically telling me so bluntly that uh, I didn't understand anything because, you know, water came from a tap for me and that they had learned the art of rainwater harvesting and that they were very, very rich. Uh, in their water for that reason that they had the knowledge of how to harvest rain. So I think these are things that don't, don't leave you, Karthi. They stay with you. They become changing points in your life. And of course, there are extraordinary people you meet in your life, which help to mold you, uh, teach you how to go ahead. I had my mentor, Anil Agarwal. I had my mother. I have over my journey met extraordinary men and women who have taught me the value of both humility as well as hard work. And I think those are the two things that I take to heart a lot. Thank you. Wow, I agree. Because of course, like when you're environmentalist and you go to different places, those incidents will resonate with you. And um, just adding on to what you said about a bit about the Chipko movement, that how so many women were hugging trees because their livelihood depended on them. So. Um, my question was that, do you think issues like climate change can impact men and women differently? Well, I think they impact the rich and poor differently, Kartik. And I think that's where we first have to understand. You know, when Gandhiji said, think of the last person, you definitely have to think of the face of the last woman, because there is no doubt a woman is worst impacted, even when it comes to the poor. But firstly, we must understand that the discrimination of this proportionate impact is on the poor. And therefore, it is the poor we need to first think about when we, when we think about climate change. They are not the ones who have contributed to climate change, but they are the ones who are worst impacted. Today, with extreme rain, with cyclones, they are the ones who are, in some senses, the victims of climate change today. And within the poor, the women are the worst victims because they are the ones who have to gather the firewood, they have to take care of their families, they have to get the water. If there is no water, they have the ones who have to walk longer and longer distances for it. So it is definitely about disproportionate impact. And that's why people like you, like me, we need to work to make sure that we understand the impact on the poor of our country and we work to fix it. Yeah, I agree. That's a very interesting take that impacts rich and poor because the rich people can easily use their facilities to guide themselves and help protect themselves from these issues. But the poor are the worst impacted and need to feed, uh, face them at the end of the day. And the women are the worst impacted amongst the poor. So um, for World Environment Day, we at Rebel Girls are focusing on collective action for restoring the environment. But most times when we talk about environment degradation and climate change, we focus more on prevention. So what is your recommendation for balancing both types of interventions? So, you know, Karthik, we have something called the Green Schools Program, which I would encourage all of you to take a look at. We basically believe that schools must walk the talk, that we cannot keep talking the talk and uh, we must walk the talk. And uh, the Green Schools Program is a very powerful tool. It helps you to understand your environmental footprint. It helps you to look at what you can do. And that's where not only preventive, but curative. How do you harvest the rain? How much water can you stop uh, using? What can you do to improve your energy footprint? So there are, and, and of course, waste is something that we all know. So I would really encourage you, take a look at the Green Schools Network, join it, participate in our network so that your school, uh, each one of us in our homes, in our schools can actually walk the talk. Thank you so much, ma'am. That, that sounds really impressive that you get the Green Schools program can balance both intervention, prevention and um, just restoration. So my last question to you is, what advice would you give to girls and boys of today who want to pursue your footsteps and become environmentalists or just want to learn more about conservation? 
I think Kartik, everybody has to follow their own footsteps. There is nobody's footsteps that you can follow. Okay, you can you can learn. I've learned a lot from people. I have taken the best of others, which we must do. But ultimately, it's your heart, your passion that must drive you. And I think I have been very fortunate. My my mother gave me all the space that I had to be a rebel. Um, I did not go to college. I started working in the field of environment because I was totally committed to it. So I think the most important thing that each one of us can do is to read, is to understand, is to learn, because that's the learning which will help us to practice better as we get older. So please join, as I said, CSE's Green School Network. We also have a website called Young Environmentalist. Join, read, participate. And I'm sure we will all, you will make sure that the world is a better place. Thank you. Yeah, I definitely agree that instead of just pursuing someone else's footsteps, you should try to create your own path. And yes, I really, I'm really inspired and intrigued by that Green Schools program and the website you just talked about. So we'll recommend all of you to check it out because you can learn more about environmentalism and the issue as a whole from there. So all right, ma'am. Thank you so much for taking Thank the time. And again, I'm honored to be part of your network. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you.